What's up, everybody? Yes. What is happening? Good day. Good day. Hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Wherever you are in the world. Uh, good to see everybody. I see there's already a lot of people online here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope I bring you a ton of value. Um, there's not a whole lot of training uh, for experienced agents, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff for new agents. There's not a lot of stuff for experienced agents. So that's why I wanted to do this today. Um, there's a lot of agents who come to me about, you know, just being stuck in the business, you know, just plateauing out, leveling out. Um, you know, they want to take their business to the next level. They just don't know quite how to, you know, get out of their rut because they've just gotten into these routines where they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and they're just not really taking it to another level. Um, and you have to get out of that. You have to get out of that rut. You have to get out of that that uh, that same routine there in order to to take it to the next level. A lot of us get comfortable, right? We get comfortable and then we feel like, um, you know, we're in a place where, you know, we're, we're, we feel like that we're putting in the work. We just need to be patient. And so we get in these routines and we just keep doing the same stuff, creating the same results, just thinking, oh, if I just keep going and just keep being patient. Now that is part of it, right? That is a huge part of it, but we have to break out of our routines if we want to really take things to another level. So I wanted to do this training for experienced agents. This is a great training session for not only experienced agents, but also new agents, right? Because new agents are new agents go through the same exact thing, um, just on a, a lower level. And, um, you know, later on in their careers as a new agent, when you hit that second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, eighth year, 10th year, 15th year, you may hit this same exact brick wall that a lot of the experienced agents are having. So I uh, wanted to do this just to get my thoughts out there to you um, about this so that hopefully you can maybe learn from my experiences and I can maybe shake it up a little bit. Maybe I can shake a little something into you today and change your perspective and change your actions on the daily so that you can change your results. Okay. So I'm going to give it a couple more minutes for people to, uh, to come on. Uh, really quickly before I get started, um, I'm going to be in Salt Lake, right? I'm leaving tomorrow to go to Salt Lake. Um, if you guys can make it to Salt Lake, if anybody's close to Salt Lake, I would love to see you in Salt Lake. All right. Um, there's a link in the description here in YouTube, or you can go to zero to diamond.com backslash events. Okay. That's where I post all the free tickets to my events. Guys, th this is, this is free, right? This is free. I don't charge for my events for the Zero to Diamond Tour. And actually in Salt Lake, I don't even have a sponsor. I'm the sponsor, right? I'm paying for the event myself and I'm still not charging the agents. Okay, so um, from there, I'm going to be in Nashville. That's August 4th. I'm going to be in Charleston, August 12th. I'm going to be in Orlando speaking at the Florida Association of Realtors, uh, August 26th. That's in Orlando. Then I'm going to be in Dallas, uh, September 8th. And I'm putting together Connecticut. I'm putting together Philly. I'm putting together Charlotte. Um, I'm also looking at Vegas. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on in terms of me traveling. I feel so good to get back on the road. Um, it's what I really love to do, like travel, see you guys, shake your hand, and um, and get on stage and hopefully inspire you guys to to take your business to the next level. Guys, it's all about just taking what you have and then taking it to the next level. I don't care where you are right now. I just want you to take where you are and take it up a notch. That's it. You don't have to do a million dollars this year. Okay. And if you're doing a million dollars this year, you don't have to do 10 million next year, right? It's not about the money. It's not about the number of transactions or it's, it's not about any of that at all. It's about taking where you are and just adding a little bit to it, learning, becoming more efficient. Maybe you're adjusting or tweaking a little something to become more efficient, more scalable, right? Producing more in less time. I think you guys realize that I am a one man production crew. <laughs> like I've got, I'm on four different platforms right now. Okay. I'm, I'm recording this on another camera. 
Um, and I don't have a crew to do this. This is just me. I've set all this stuff up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm shooting videos. I'm selling a hundred properties a year. I'm coaching, I'm traveling, I'm speaking, I'm posting on all platforms every day. Um, so you guys can, can probably sit back and, and realize that I've become really good at learning how to produce more and less time. And so then I don't take that extra time and just do nothing. No, I'm, I'm learning how to do more and less time so that I can take this extra time and do even more <laughs> where you multiply production and not everybody's that ambitious, right? Seattle. Yes. I'm going to do a West coast tour next summer, Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, LA, San Diego, Hawaii. That's what I'm planning on. So we'll see how it all, how it all plays out. All right. I think everybody is tuned in and ready to roll next week at this same time. Let me make sure I'm telling you guys right. Yes. Next week at this same time, I'm going to do a training session on NFTs. So, and the reason I'm doing that is because from what I can tell, nobody even knows what one is. Nobody knows what an NFT is or how to buy one. So I'm going to do a training session next Tuesday at the same time, 1 p.m. Central. Um, and I'm going to go through NFTs, um, crypto wallets, cryptocurrency, stuff like that, just to guy, just to bring you guys up to speed on on my level of um, education, um, which isn't much, by the way, but at least it's a lot more than a lot of you, because a lot of you don't even know what an NFT is. So I want you to know what an NFT is, how to buy an NFT, right? So that you can be ready for my NFT project coming up soon, which a lot of you guys are going to capitalize on, and it's really going to help a lot of people. So I'm excited about that. If you're not part of the free coaching program, right, at 02diamond.com, I have a completely free coaching program. Go there, 02diamond.com, download the 90-day action plan, and get to work, right? It's just that simple. Download, get to work. Download, get to work. All right, cool. Let's dive in here. And if you guys have questions, feel free to um, shout it out in the comments. I'm watching all the comments come through. I definitely want to take some questions today, um, but I'm speaking to the experienced agents who have hit a brick wall in their career. Okay. You, you've hit that point where, okay, you have this routine, you've been building your business and you've got it to a point, but maybe you're at, let's say 250 a year or 350 a year, right? You're making 350,000 a year, but you've made that same amount every year. Okay. For like the last four years and you just can't quite seem to break out of this $350,000 a year income. Um, so that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. And this is great again for any agents. It's not just experienced agents. This is good stuff to hear for anyone. Okay. And I'm going to really speak to you from my personal experiences um, of hitting these brick walls because everyone hits the brick wall. So that's the first thing you need to know uh, about this is that everyone hits these walls. This is completely common. This is part of the process. This is something that everyone's going to go through. You are no better than anyone else. It's kind of like making cold calls. A lot of people say, I'm scared to make calls. So I'm not going to make calls. Yeah, everyone is scared to make calls the first time they do it. But the real um, winners, they move forward with it. They just break through that fear and they say, you know what? I'm going to do this because this is what's going to cause my family to live their, their best life. And I want my family to live their best life. So I'm going to do this. And so, you know, it's totally common to be scared to make calls in the beginning. It's totally uh, common to run into frustrations in the business. Okay. It's totally common to, to, to hit these walls and to become frustrated and disappointed. All right. So I want to talk to you guys about my experiences with this. And then I want to talk about what I think it's going to take for you guys to break through uh, this, these brick walls. Okay, and they're not really walls. They're just little road bumps. Realize that. These are not walls. They're road bumps. And they're very easily driven over. If you have the right perspective, if you're thinking more on a long-term basis, if you are doing the right things to try to get just a little better every day, 1% better every day, guys. All right? So listen, before I dive into it, I just want you guys to know, and you probably can tell, I just want you guys to succeed so bad, so bad. I just want to see you guys win. 
I just want to see you win. And, and, and when I say win, I'm talking about having a smile on your face. I'm talking about being so happy with life and enjoying your life, enjoying your career, enjoying your family, enjoying whatever it is that you do, your hobbies and everything included. I want you to enjoy it. I don't, we didn't get into real estate to be stressed out and have high anxiety and worry about deals and worry about inspections and this, that, and the other. Don't quit worrying about that stuff. I want you to be happy. Two things. I want you to be satisfied with where you are and I want you to get better every day. I want you to work on getting better every day. Just a little bit better. Learn something new. Tweak something you're doing. Get a little better. All right? So, listen, there's been plenty of times I've hit brick walls, okay? And listen, when when I hit the brick wall when I lost everything back in 2005 when I sold my last condo in January of 2005 before I got back into roofing mid mid 2005, Eventually landed a job on an oil rig in 2007, the entire year of 2007. Now that was a that was a <laughs> that wasn't a brick wall because I got back in the business, but but that was a heck of a road bump, right? And a lot of uh, people would have threw in the towel right then. A lot of people would have threw in the towel right then, um, but I didn't. I didn't know that I was going to get back in real estate. I'll be honest with you uh, on that. I'll be dead honest. I didn't know I was going to get back into real estate. Um, but you know the the good Lord and um, you know fate and destiny and you know everything just kind of led me right back into the business and you know I, I just think I had a lot of unfinished business right I just a lot of unfinished business I wasn't gonna let this business take me out like that so I'll tell you about one specific little hurdle that I had and I've talked about this before um, but. You know, I mean, well, there, there's two hard. Let's, let's go back. Okay. Whenever I got back in the business, okay, on the oil rig, I'm making $44,000 a year. $44,000 a year and, and risking my life, right? Risking my life. I come out of that and I make $100,000, $100,000 in 2008, right? Is that right? No, $80,000, $80,000 in 2008. So I made almost double what I made on the oil rig. The year before, which was I was ecstatic. Eighty thousand dollars as a real estate agent, and I was ecstatic. I was like beside myself. If that tells you anything, and a lot of you, a lot of you are. I talked to I talked to you. I'm talking to you on the phone, one on one, and you're telling me you're in your first year. You're going to make thirty five thousand. Your goal was one hundred and fifty, and you're very deeply depressed. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I sold four properties my first year. I made like twenty thousand dollars, something like that. You made thirty. You made more than me in my first year, and you're depressed because your goal was one hundred fifty thousand. When really you're set up now to actually make that one hundred fifty your second year. It's crazy the expectations that you guys are setting, and the pressure you're putting on yourself, and the anxiety that you're that you're um, instilling is unreal and completely unnecessary completely unnecessary. Stop doing this, guys. Stop focusing on the results and how much money you make and what the what the transaction number is and start focusing on giving it all you have every day to contact as many people as you can and get just a little better. Get a little better at communication. Get a little better at efficiencies with processes of going through the transaction. What you're delegating. Get better at delegation, right? Giving handing off certain tasks to open your time up to be more efficient. I've become a master at that. And this is something that is really hard for me, delegation. Because like being a single agent, I mean, I guess you guys can realize I'm, I'm not a good delegator and I'm still selling properties. Like I'm still showing properties. I'm still going to listing appointments even right now at this time. Um, so I'm a horrible delegator. However, I have managed to figure out a way to and everybody's different. I figured out a way to delegate what I need to delegate to make my life easy. And that's what you got to figure out. What do you have to delegate to make your life easier? And this is part of taking your business to the next level. Because a lot of you may be holding on to every last little detail when you should be delegating so much, so much. And this is something that you know I have to look at on a one-on-one -on -one basis. 
I have to look at this on a one-on-one -on -one basis and really talk to you about your specific situation to really go deeper with that subject in terms of what to delegate, how to delegate, because everybody's different. Um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of agents, they want to delegate the showing of the properties. They want to get a showing agent, delegate the showings. I'm still showing my buyers. So everybody's different. You can't really judge the entire situation on um, or, or just give a blanket. OK, here. And that's one thing I really disagree with on a lot of the mainstream coaches is they give these general blanket you know, trainings like here's exactly what you do every time. Here's what everyone should do. It's not that's not the case. Everybody's different and has a different, um, different situations to deal with. So, you know, but, but just know that part of the process of taking it to the next level, especially if you're a single agent, right, is to find that level of delegation that you need to cross. And you, a part of that, I'll tell you this before I move on. Part of that is being okay with, whoever you delegate some of the tasks to, you have to be okay with those tasks not being perfect. You have to be okay with there being some mistakes. You have to be okay with them screwing up. If, if my assistant costs me $1,000 or $2,000 on a mistake she made, I'm fine with it. I talk to her. I'm like, what happened? She's like this. I'm like, listen, good job. Because she made an executive decision without me. She makes so many executive decisions without me that, that it makes my life so easy. I can afford to pay for that thousand dollar mistake because of all the time that she allowed me to have and gave back to me that I invested back into my businesses that made me I, I can't even count the number. It's not a thousand. <laughs> it's more like millions. So, you know, listen, yes, we're going to sit down and talk about the mistake and we're going to make sure things like that don't happen again and we're going to get better, but I'm not going to chastise her. I'm not going to make her feel bad about making a, make an executive decision. Everybody makes mistakes. I don't care if everything's perfect. I'm going to stand up for her before I stand up for anybody else. I'll tell you that right now. I got her back over everybody's when it comes to business. If somebody wants to get mad at her for making a mistake, if if it if it comes back on me that she makes a mistake and people are mad, you know, and then and then and I'm not gonna turn around and say, oh, well, it's my assistant's fault. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that. So delegation, guys, and finding a real team, uh team. You're a team, you're a team with your assistant. All right. So let's take it back now. When I got in the business, back in the business in 2008, I did uh, $80,000 ecstatic. The next year I do a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like mind blown. Okay. The very next year was the year of the BP oil spill, which was a, a serious, serious moment for us down here on the beach where I'm right on the Gulf of Mexico on the beach, selling primarily Gulf front beachfront condos. And it was a very scary moment. Um, people, real estate agents were leaving here and going to Birmingham and going to Huntsville and going to Atlanta thinking that it's over down here. Honestly, sellers were dumping their properties. Buyers were, you know, throwing their hands up and saying, I don't want nothing to do with this. And in, and in that year, I applied everything I learned through the crash and I made 150000 I increased my income from 100000 in 2009 to 150. dollars in a very strange year where basically we had a mini crash. It was a local, it was a more localized um, crash. It was a crash, honestly. And I made 50% more money that year. Why? Because I applied everything I learned and everything that I teach you guys, every single video to that moment. And I, I, you know, everybody was freaking out in the office and I stood back and uh, my dad was there. And I said, listen, guys, Stay calm, call your clients, tell them what's going on, right? Get through your entire list and say, listen, here's what's going on. I'm going to keep you informed. What can I do to help you, right? People are dumping properties. Do you want to buy a property cheaper, you know, or are you scared enough to dump your property because we can sell your property? Um, let me know what I can do to help you. When I run through my clients, boom, then the next step is, People I don't know. I'm reaching out to people I don't know. And I'm saying, how you doing? You know, is there anything I can do to help you with the oil spill? I mean, 
You know, do you need information? Do you want updates? You know, do you want to buy one of these cheap properties? Do you want to sell? It's the same thing. It's the same thing when the market crashes. There's going to be a three month delay. Okay. There's going to be a scary moment that nobody's expecting, right? It's going to make everybody put the, put the brakes on. Everybody's going to step back. There's going to be a three month little period there. And during that moment, we got to call our past clients. I mean, we got to go hard and call our past clients and say, Hey, did you see that thing that just happened? The interest rates went up or something. Who knows what happened? What's going on with you with this? What do you think about it? Because there's one of three things they're going to have to do. Okay. They're either going to be getting ready to buy as prices come down. They're going to sell because they're in trouble or they're going to hold on and write it out. There's only one of three things uh, that they're possibly going to do. All right. So when the market takes the, takes a huge turn, a massive turn, okay, we, everyone that follows me, everybody that's part of Zero to Diamond, everybody that's on my team, every agent that I can possibly get to, we need to be ready to go all in in that moment, all in. Okay. And I want you guys to be ready. Let's take it back to the 2010 when I made 150. That next year I made about 250. Then I got into a rut. Then I got into a rut. I got into a rut. I was I was sitting around 250 to 300 for a couple of years. Right? There was there was I was like at 250 to 300 for a couple of years. And I said, "You know what? this ain't doing it. I was making my calls. I was doing my thing. I was sending out handwritten letters. I was spending back then, I was spending a good 60,000 plus a year on postcards and mail outs. Um, you know, something that, you know, to be honest with you, I don't suggest nowadays. Um, you know, the, 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 the results I got out of that was not 60,000 worth compared to where, where I can put that 60,000 in today's world is not a comparison, but that's what I was doing because that was all I had. Right. Um, that was, that was, I mean, there was only a couple of different things that I could actually do back then. Okay. So, so what did I do during that time? Right. What did I do? And, and everything stair steps for me. Right. So, so one year. One year, because this is what happens, the cycle, the cycle of the year. Everybody has cycles in their year, okay? There's a busy season and there's a slow season. There's a season where a lot of people are buying, everything's busy, and then there's this slow season where it's slower. For us down here, it's normally summertime, spring and summer are the busier, and in the winter, it's slower. Some places are the complete opposite, okay? So I don't know you guys' uh, individual markets, but the fact is, is that there's a slow period and, and a, uh, a busy season. And what I was doing, this is what I was doing up to the point that I decided to make a change. This is the first thing I want you to realize. If you want to take your business to another level, let's play the seasons. Write that down. Okay. This is, this is one massive point I want to make to you that I think you can use to take your business to the next level. Okay. Let's play the seasons. What I think a lot of you are doing is doing the same activities all year long, but the seasons, all right, the buying season and the slow season are changing throughout the year, but you are doing the same exact activities regardless of what season it is. What you need to do, what I would love for you to do, what I want to help you do is realize that there are different seasons and, and we need to recognize when these seasons are and we need to adjust what we're doing on a daily and weekly basis during uh, the seasons, okay? What I started doing was this. When I realized, when I realized that this could be something that could stair-step my, my production every year, I started doing this. What I did was in the busy season, I didn't really make that many calls because I'm so busy selling, you know. Um, now, before I realized this, <clears throat> before I realized this, I was just calling, calling, calling all year long. You know, I was making time to call when it was busy, and then I was calling when it was slow. You know, I was just calling when I could. Um, but I, I kind of had the same, you know, strategy all year long. 
I changed it up. And in like 2012 or so, I switched it up. And what I did was, as I said, I'm going to go even harder on my calls in the slow season because I was doing like, you know, three hours a day, kind of like what I tell you guys to do. Okay. So, so what I realized is that in the slow season, I could actually make more calls during the slow season than I did all year long doing it the other way. Because the other way I was just allotting a certain amount of time, um, you know, and I was just kind of hitting it here or there. What I did differently when I wanted to take my business to the next level is I realized I got to play the seasons. And so by playing the seasons in the slow season, I, I made it a point that I was going to make more calls in the slow season than I did all year using my, my other strategy. And then what happens is, is during the slow season, I build my database up. Okay. I build my database up to a certain point. Whereas when the busy season comes now, my business explodes because I've created all these new relationships in the market during the slow season. Okay. So, so, so what happens is, is I make more calls in the slow season than I was before. I build my database up to the point where now I feel this busy season coming. I quit doing the calls and now I'm just riding the wave of this explosion of business. And then as that wave crashes and starts to flatten out and it, we get back into the slow season, now I'm right back on the phone and I want to do the whole process over again. And what happens is, is as you make these relationships, you're accumulating you are accumulating relationships. You're accumulating business. You're accumulating clients. And so as you're accumulating clients, those clients aren't going anywhere. Yes, some people may unsubscribe. Yes, you may have a, people use a different agent or whatever. Okay, that's just part of it as well. I mean, the entire you know, premise of building any business is literally taking the population, putting your content and putting your you know, services in front of them, and then consolidating down and, and, and finding that concentrated group of the population who want to do business with you, who love you, who who can't you know who can't get enough of you, who really want to see you do business with you, um, associate with you, all the above. So as you accumulate more clients in the off season, okay, that creates a really big um, buying season, right? Whenever everything's exploding. And then when the slow season comes again, you do it again. But now you, your, your business is still the same size as it was as you grew it to the last slow season. Now you're just adding to that, right? Now it's growing again. And now what happens? You make more money the next year. You make more money the next year. So then the slow season comes again and you go hard to build your database even further. And then boom, you stair step up again. This is what I used when I realized that I was in a, in a, in a, just a, <laughs> a funk. I was like, what can I do here? Okay. Let me play the season thing. Let me see if this thing works. Okay. And so I look at it as the off season. Okay. Football players, baseball players, anybody in sports, you know, that in the off season, that's when you get better. Not during the season, you get better in the off season. The people that are working the hardest in the off season, that's the people who are growing their business and getting better every year. You see these NFL players, they come in and they get better every year. Okay. They're not just getting better every year because they're having great seasons. And that's what they're getting better because they're working harder in the off season every year to add to what they have already and continue to accumulate those skills. All right. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Play the seasons. So I played the seasons and I took my 350 up to 600. I took my 350 up to 600. 2014, I hit 100 deals. I hit 100 deals. That was the first year I hit 100 deals and I made 600,000. And I'm like, thank you. I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama and I uh, hit 100 deals. And it felt good to get there. However, that wasn't where I wanted to be at the end of the day. I wanted to be at a million dollars GCI. I wanted to be at a million dollars, you know, gross commissions. That's That was the goal from day one. The entire time is to figure out how to get to the million dollars. So I wasn't completely satisfied uh, yet, even though I was very happy with where I was, I wasn't completely satisfied. So what I did, what I did was, I, uh, I created this plan. I created a plan. You know, I made 600,000 the next year. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make that million dollars. 
I'm going to make that million dollars this year. All right. This is going to be 2015. I'm going to make that million dollars. So, you know, here comes November, here comes December of 2014. And I make this plan and I really, you know, I create a simple math. It was simple math. Okay. It was, this is what you have to do. These are how many calls you have to make. This is how many listing appointments. This is how many listings you need per week, per month in order to get to the million dollars that you want to get to. I had it all planned out. And so here comes January and I'm off to the races. The first of the year, I'm like, this is going to be my year, 2015. I'm going to make a million dollars this year. I mean, listen, guys, I 100% believed it. It wasn't like I didn't, it didn't happen because I didn't think it was going to happen. Right. I believed it was going to happen 100%. There was nothing that was going to stop me from making that, that million dollars. So here comes January and I'm crushing, I'm crushing, I'm crushing. And I can't quite hit the numbers that I'm wanting, but I'm, I'm not freaking out yet. It's just January. Right. Here comes February. Not quite hitting the numbers. Here comes March. Not quite hitting the numbers. And what I realized was that I was on track to hit 600,000 again. Now, this is the moment that I became. Ooh, I was, I don't really, it's, I wasn't depressed. I was more deeply frustrated, right? Deeply disappointed in myself. Um, you know, I just wanted it so bad. And, you know, listen, guys, I was, I was still in the mindset of relationships over transactions. Understand that through all this. Yes, I was trying to close the deals and make the money, but I was, it was all focused on people. All right. And every plan that I put in place was around how can I help more people? Okay. So don't get it twisted with how I'm talking about money right here. That wasn't, you know, that, that was a personal goal that had nothing to do with my goals to help as many people as possible. The money part showed me that I was helping more people, right? So if I made a million dollars, I know I helped a lot of people. That was what it was. That was what it was for me. So here I go. Looks like I'm going to make 600 again. Became deeply, deeply, deeply frustrated. Okay. Incredibly frustrated. You know, I'm working the seasons. I did my calls in the off season. I made my database bigger. So, so theoretically, with creating a bigger database in the off season, I should make more income this year. But no, it looks like I'm going to make 600 again. What's going on here? So then I went into a deep dive personal development stage where I researched all the top agents. I was researching agents that were, you know, selling a billion dollars a year, selling 500 million a year, selling 200 million a year. I was reading about them. I was reading books. I was watching videos. I was listening to podcasts. I was trying to figure out every little thing I could possibly figure out about why I can't do this. And through all that research, it finally landed, landed me to hire a coach. Okay, and that was the that was the one and only coach I ever hired because I was that desperate to really get to the next level. When I hired the coach, I had the coach for four months, and it was a it was more of a it was more of like a counselor kind of thing. Like he went through the same process of call expires, do pre listing packages, close the deal, all the stuff that I'm kind of you know coach against, basically coach the exact opposite of, but. Um, there were so many positives to the experience for me because, you know, listen, guys, there's three reasons why somebody would need a coach. They either need to learn the fundamentals, like there's something going on fundamentally. They don't understand the process. They need to know how to generate leads, close deals, whatever the case may be. So they either need to know the fundamentals. They either need accountability, okay, or they their perspective is wrong and they they need help mentally to, 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 to view the situations correctly so that you can make the right moves. Okay. Um, and I walked into the coaching scenario thinking that uh, my fundamentals are off. I'm thinking, you know, Hey, I'm motivated. I'm hungry. Uh, my, my mentality is right where it needs to be. I definitely don't need to be held accountable. I definitely don't need to be held accountable. So what's next? Fundamentals. I have to be doing something fundamentally wrong. So I walked into the coaching scenario, um, walked into the program with a once a week call, thinking my fundamentals are off. So I followed the program to a T. I followed it to a T. I'm calling expireds. I'm doing pre listing packages. I'm doing everything that I'm told to do because this is what I want. 
And what I realized after a four month uh, run is that I didn't need fundamentals. I didn't need accountability. What I, where I was going wrong was my mentality, my mentality, my perspective. And it comes down to my four keys to success, right? You got to believe, adapt, work hard, and be patient. And I felt like I was those things, but I wasn't. I was missing the last one. This was the last piece for me. This was the last piece of the puzzle for me. I needed to learn how to be patient. I was working hard and I believed. I was adapting. I was adapting big time. I'm, I mean, I was shaking and moving. I mean, I adapted what I did through the year. I'm learning how to communicate better. I'm using better you know, words. I'm, my tone is better. I'm making people feel like they're family. I'm co- uh, connecting. I'm not even trying to close people. I'm just trying to be their friends and help them through whatever it is they're trying to do. And I'm getting better and better and better at that along the way. And what I realized through my coaching, you know, sessions, that four month period of time and getting to the point where, and I did end up the year with 600,000 again, at the end of the year, I didn't care that it was 600,000 again. That, that was the point right there. That was the huge, huge, huge turning point for me when, when I realized that I was going to make 600 again and I didn't care that I was happy with the 600. I was happy with the 600 because I knew that the 600 was my full potential because I was giving complete 100% um, effort. I was giving everything that I had uh, to make that 600. And and because I knew that that was all I had, I was going to yield the highest results possible for me. And at that point, you have to be happy with whatever those results are because you can't control the results. So I had to understand that you can't control the results. You can only control your actions and your efforts. And that was a huge, huge, huge thing for me. The very next year, I made 750. That was 2016. I didn't even make a million the next year. It was a 750 year, but it was better. It was better than the 600. And then the next year, 2017, was the first year I hit the million. And I've hit a million every year since. Okay, so I want to explain this process to you guys. I want to I want to explain this process to you guys of of how this happened, how I got to the million and how I've continued to do the million every year since. Okay, I want you guys to understand the philosophy behind the entire process from a bird's eye view so that you understand Um, that way you can look at your own business. You can look at your own business and you can say, okay, this is where I am. Okay, and then over time, this many years, this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to stair step up to this level, and then this is how I'm going to maintain that level, whatever that level is for you. I've got agents that want to make one hundred thousand a year. That's all they want to make. I've got agents that want to do two hundred, five hundred, a million, two million, whatever level of ambition you have. It doesn't matter to me. I just want to help you get to that level and stay at that level. And I want to go through that process with you right now. Um, so basically it goes like this, right? Your database. Okay. Think about this, the size of your database. Okay. The size of your database that is full of people that you are friends with people that you have talked to people that think of you as family, people that are getting weekly emails from you and, and see you on social media. And, you know, um, you guys feel like you're close. You guys feel that closeness. When I came back in the business in 2008, after I realized that it was relationships over transactions, not the other way around, I started having different kind of conversations with my clients. I was having conversations with my clients where they felt that I cared about them and I felt like we like we were there. It was like such a connection. Whereas before I was in the business, I was having these cold conversations. You know, it was like I could tell like, you know, it's like we had no connection. They didn't really care about me. We we're just doing the deal. And I didn't really even care about them, to be honest with you. You know, we're we just doing the deal. I mean, I was kind of giving them what they're giving me. But when I got back in the business 2008, after I realized that that's where I went wrong, my conversations were completely different. I'm not trying to sell people anything. I'm not trying to get you to buy or sell anything. I just want to get to know you. I want you to know what I do and that I'm here to help you when you decide to do something, whether it be today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, 10 years from now. And I want to help anybody you know buy or sell real estate. So 
these conversations were completely different. So when you understand that 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 concept that people decide who their real estate agent is by who their friend is in the business and the object is is to create as many friends in the market as possible. When you get past that now, it's about how many friends you can create. And the size of your income is going to be dictated by the size of that database. Not the size of the database of internet leads you never talked to or people that you extracted or email addresses you bought somewhere. No, it's going to be dictated by the amount of real friends in your database that are getting original content from you consistently and your name's in front of them. Here, here's, here's something to think about as you're building your database, making a great first impression on people and they get that feeling. When people get that great, when, when people get that first impression from you and they feel like, man, this person really cares. This person really, you know, it seems like a hard worker and is, it, it seems dependable and honest and professional. You know, this is, this is a, this is a great, this is a good guy. This is a good guy or good girl. When they get that feeling from you after that first conversation, and then you can take their data and you can start to hit them on a consistent basis. I love the weekly email and they see your name. What happens every time they see that email, they get that feeling again. They get that feeling again uh, that they had the first time. They're like, oh, there's that Ricky. There's, there's Ricky again. There's that great guy. There's that great guy. I'm, I'm going to use him. I'm going to use him as a real estate agent when I get ready to buy or sell. Um, I, I'm sure it's going to be a great experience. He's just a good person, right? He works hard. He cares about people. He does what he says he's going to do. He's consistent, okay? You want to create these great first impressions. You want to collect that data, and you want to build your database, ladies and gentlemen, because that's going to dictate the amount and the size of your income. The size of your database is going to dictate the size of your income, okay? So what we have to understand is that a lot of agents who come into the business and they reach this level of 150000 a year and they kind of plateau there and they just start hitting 150 everywhere, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150. And you kind of wonder why. I can tell you why. They came in the business. They were guns a-blazing. They were talking to everybody. They built their database up to the point where they made the 150 and then they quit. They put their guns away. And now they're just living off their database. Understand this concept. Understand this concept, my friends. When you quit building your database and you just rely on your database for past clients and referrals, you just rely on your database. You're not really adding anyone to your database at all. You're not growing your database. Your number stays the same. Your income will plateau. Your income will plateau. It will level out. So I want you to understand that. If you're in a place right now where your income is leveled out at uh, 50000 a year, 100000 a year, 150, whatever it is, and you've been hitting that number every year since, I can tell you, you're not talking to new people in the market you never talked to to give those great first impressions, to collect their data, to add them to your database. That's not happening. So every year, if you take the slow season to grow the database, the busy season to close the database, the next slow season to grow your database even more, the busy season to close, the next slow season to grow it even more, the next season to close, the next season to grow it even more, you can create a skyscraper of a database, ladies and gentlemen, slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. It's just a matter of time. And I don't care if it takes you 10 years, 15 years. Keep building your database. The moment you stop building your database, your income plateaus. And, and listen, I'm speaking from experience. When I hit the million dollars in 2017, I quit making cold calls. I quit sending postcards. I quit doing, I was never doing social media for my real estate business. I quit doing everything I was doing except the weekly email to stay in touch with my database. That's the only activity that I did from, from 2017 to today. And what has happened? Every year, a million dollars, million dollars, million dollars. Why? Because I took 15 years to build my database up to the point where I'm making a million dollars. And now I can live off my database to maintain that million dollars. 
If you're at 250 and you want to make 500, then you need to take the next couple years to build that database up to the point where you, you, you know how you've got your database up to the point where you're making the desire, where you can make the desired income every year. Because as you're building the database, you hit that desired income. You can't stop building the database until you hit the income you want to hit, right? It wasn't like the beginning of 2017, I quit doing everything. No, it was the end of 2017 that I quit doing everything after I actually hit the million dollars. Then I'm like, okay, now I can let my database make me that million dollars every year. So I've made some really um, good points in my opinion here about working through the slow seasons, working the seasons, building the database. Okay. I've made some really good points about how to stair step your income every year. Okay. If you're in a rut, I can tell you right now, chances are you're not adding anyone to your database on a consistent basis. And this, these are just facts. Right. And, and, you know, I'm not going to stereotype everyone. It's, it's completely on an individual basis. Okay. But what I wanted to do today was just give you, tell you guys my story and everything that I went through with hitting these road bumps and everything that I did to get over these road bumps and everything I did to build my business up to the point that I wanted my desired income. And then the process and the mentality behind getting there and staying there. Now, I'm selling 100 properties a year, making a million dollars a year, working five hours a week in my real estate business. I'm working five hours a week in my real estate business, guys. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous of that. You don't know what I went through for 15 years to get where I'm at. Nobody wants to talk about that. They just want to talk about, oh, 100 properties, five hours a week, million dollars. Oh, Mr. Big Shot. Yeah, go make 100,000 calls with your finger with your hand, look up the numbers on Spokio and Bigfoot and whitepages.com and, and do handwritten letters, spend 60 grand a, a year on postcards. You guys go do all that for 15 years and then come talk to me. You guys don't want to do that. You're not going to do that. And the cool thing about it is you don't have to do that. With today's technology, with companies like Red X, you can literally click a mouse, get thousands of numbers, another, another button, dial them at 100 dials an hour. You can make the same 100,000 calls that took me 15 years in a matter of two or three years. You guys could be exactly where I am right now within two to three years from being brand new. You can be exactly where I am within two, three, four, five years, however long it takes you to build the database up to the point that I have mine because you guys... You guys have the technology. You guys have the, the resources that I didn't have. You guys can do things so much faster than it took me, but, but hardly any of you are taking advantage of it. Just give, me, just give me two to three to four hard years. Create five new relationships with, with property owners every day for four years and tell me you're not the number one agent in your market. You create five new relationships with property owners every day, voice to voice, followed by a weekly email on the same day of the week forever for four years, and tell me you're not the number one re uh, uh, a realtor in your market. I would love for you to, to go through that process and tell me you're not number one. It's not going to happen. You're going to be number one. All right, so... I hope you guys go back if you just tune in and watch this uh, entire video. Uh, let me know. what I'll, I'll take a couple questions. If you guys have any questions, I'm going to put those in the comments. I'll be here for another couple minutes. And I just wanted to, to say thank you guys. Um, I hope you guys can tell how much I really want you guys to win so bad. And uh, I'll do anything to help you do that. While I'm waiting on a couple questions here, I just want to reiterate that next week at the same time, I'm going to do training on NFTs. What are NFTs? How do you buy NFTs? All that good stuff. Because a lot of people have no idea. They're completely oblivious. I'm going to be in Salt Lake uh, the day after tomorrow, Thursday. Cannot wait to see you guys there. If you're anywhere close to Salt Lake, I would love to see you. Zero to diamond.com backslash events or link in the YouTube description. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll also be in many other cities. So just go there and 
and check it out. And if you're not part of the free coaching program, okay, at zero to diamond.com, click the button, create an account, download the 90 day action plan and get to work guys. It's completely free. And if you guys need anything, uh, DM me on Instagram and also the discord. Uh, if you guys aren't on the discord yet, uh, the discord is, uh, at around 2000 agents already. So I'm going to put a link uh, for that. We're at, we're making live calls in the Discord uh, every day. So you guys can go there and make live calls with us and with many other agents um, in the Discord. Let's see. Let me add that right here so you guys can connect there. Discord is better than, fa than the Facebook group. I got to be honest with you. Um, join the ZTD Discord. It is much better. Total transparency. Let's see. I'll put it right here too in the comments. Boom. You guys can connect there. Ask me questions. Post your daily results on Discord. I actually will see them as opposed to Facebook. Not, I can't, I mean, I only see certain ones on Facebook because there's an algorithm in place. There's not an algorithm with Discord. I see everything in real time. I can scroll back, chronological order. So definitely connect with me and all the rest of the agents there. And uh, let's hold each other accountable. Let's make our live calls there. And let's uh, uh, let's post our daily results there. Uh, so on and so forth. Let's see. Is the link not working? Let's see. Yeah, it should work. Let me see. let me check real quick. Boom. Yes, it's working. It's working. Yes, and there's 2,000 members. That's exciting. Um, the link is working, so just try it on a different <clears throat> browser or something. All right, I'm going to take a couple questions real quick before I roll here. And also, I'm going to be doing live calls <laughs> pretty soon. Here in the next two hours, I'll be right back here live doing live calls with an agent. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to, to doing that as well. How big is my database? Right now it's 15,000 people. All right. Let's see. Here's a good one. Hey, Ricky, if an agent has never made a call and wants to ease into making calls, what's the best type of call to make? Geo leads or just calling around an area of an active listing? Sebastian, that is exactly the same thing. Okay, Geo Leads is calling around an area of an active listing. But to answer your question, um, I would do I would start out with Geo Leads and expireds, even do for sale by owners if you're new to it, just to kind of get your feet wet. You're going to want to settle into Geo Leads and expireds. You want to go back on the expireds and go back a couple years and call old expireds, new expireds. You know, hit the expireds, do Geo Leads, mix it up, right? Call some internet leads. Call some past clients and referrals. Do some for sale owners. Mix it up. Diversify who you're calling in your market. Thanks for the question, my man. Let's see. Okay, here's one. Success after 50 possible. Absolutely. You have a great... Listen, do you know how much you can accomplish in five years? Not to mention 10 or 15 years. It's it's ungodful. Like in today's world where you can literally do things 10 times faster than it took me when I started, you can literally set yourself up within a good five years. I mean, I just kind of went through that and said that if you guys gave me a, a you know three to five hard years, you could be where you could be the number one agent in your market, without a doubt. All right, looking for another question, looking for another question, guys. Ooh, I love this one. How would you say that you anticipate the market shifting itself as the Fed eventually begins to stop buying bonds? It seems listing prices are highly inflated with rates, keeping volume high. Absolutely, my guy. That's a really good point, a really good question. So basically, man, listen, here's the bottom line, okay? And here's the real bottom line. For real estate agents, like for, for, for us as a human race, that matters because, you know, the markets and this and that, we're invested into the market, things of that nature. But as a real estate agent, we don't really care about that. 
Yes, we care because then we have to consult our clients through and navigate that. But we don't need to be predicting what the market's going to do. We never need to predict what the market is going to do. We always tell clients what the market had has done, what it's doing now, and then let them make a decision. We don't ever try to predict what the market is going to do. That will get you in trouble every single time. No one knows what is going to happen. But listen, the market is going to turn around at some point. And um, I'll, I'll link a video in the in the under YouTube about this euphoric shift that's fixing to happen for real estate agents. We're going to be in a complete state of euphoria when every, when every seller, this is the largest bubble of, of pent up seller demand that we've ever seen. Larger, I've never seen a bubble of, of so big of sellers who want to sell, but can't. Okay. They can't because they're scared to leave money on the table. They can't because there's nowhere to go. That is going to change at some point. When it does, they're going to realize it on the same day. They're all going to call their real estate agent that you, if you guys are making calls and finding these sellers who don't have anywhere to go, that's the perfect client you want right now. You want the sellers who are saying, you know, there's nowhere to go. I don't know what to do. I sure would not move. I'd love to sell if I could find a place. Cool. You need to save those for the day that I'm telling you is going to happen where it explodes. They all call you on the same day and say, sell, sell, sell before it goes down because they're going to realize we've hit a top at some point and they're all going to realize it at the same time. Feds go, you know, Fed, they raise the interest rate, stop buying bonds, whatever the case may be, they're going to realize it and they're going to want to sell all at the same time. When the market slows down, that means buyers went away, but we're not going to lose, we're not going to lose all the buyers. There's still going to be some there and we're going to have those buyers on a pocket that just lost on three deals. Now, all of a sudden you're going to have a lot of listings to sell those buyers. You're going to double in a bunch of deals. This is if you're putting in the work to create five new friends or property owners every day and building that database. And the cool thing is, it doesn't matter if what I'm saying doesn't happen. You win either way. Guys, I'm trying to put you in position to win regardless. If you guys will just listen to me, I'm trying to help you guys win no matter what happens. And put you in a position, William, where what you're saying as a real estate agent doesn't matter. As a human being, sure. As an investor, sure. Um, but as a real estate agent... Closings are going to continue to happen every single day for the rest of your life, no matter what the market does. Cool, guys. If you guys have any more questions, just hit me up on Instagram or on Discord. Discord is a really good place to get me now. I'm, I'm got a lot of attention right there. You can DM me there on, on Discord or ask me questions in the Ask Ricky channel on Discord. And I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this. It was very therapeutic for me to get all this off my chest and uh, kind of just uh, get it out there for you. And again, I hope it helped a lot. And I'll see you guys in Salt Lake or a city near you real soon. And again, please let me know what I could do to help you. I'll talk to you guys soon.